Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the Fooshcast. Uh, sorry, no music intro for you today. <laughs> no music for you. No music for you. That is what uh, iTunes has told us, and so uh, we're going to keep to that. No, just kidding. Um, <clears throat> listen, this is a special 2015 New York International Toy Fair special uh, recording. I'm here, uh, Tony, I'm here with Nick. At the Foosh New York offices? Yes, the Foosh <laughs> New York offices in the heart of Times Square. Um, <clears throat> yesterday and today, Nick and I have been been running from uh, place to place, manufacturer to manufacturer, hero to hero, um, trying to collect all the best news and picks for you guys out there in Foosh land. Um, so here at the end of our Sunday, we're grizzled, we're tired, we're freezing. But we're going to record this just for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's. I guess we'll start off with um, kind of the the princess of the weekend, at least as as far as I'm concerned, and that's Hasbro's Marvel Legends and sister lines. I mean, we are often known as a Marvel Legends site, but uh, in all fairness, uh, over the last two days, everything that we saw. There's more to talk about with Marvel Legends than probably anything yeah, else. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's absolutely. fair. And, and, you know, that's a credit to, I guess, what they have coming out. But Hasbro really put Marvel on display more than anything else, which is something that they've never done uh, at Toy Fair. So it was exciting that the, the Marvel offering even took care of uh, everything else that Hasbro had to show. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm more excited for Marvel Legends now than. From, I, I can't remember when. Yeah. So I was yeah I was telling uh, talking to a couple of you and a couple other people. I said I you know this is easily the biggest year for Legends since Hasbro took over. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, definitely. It's in volume and, and probably execution. Yeah. <laughs> too. And 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 you know in terms of the demand of characters, the the quality of the figures, you know everything. They've really you know from where they were. I mean, let's face it. Hasbro took a lot of grief when they took over. Um, whether some of it was deserved or not, but you know the the first figures that came out under the Hasbro name um, were were a little dicey. A lot of them were pretty dicey. But well, you, you know that that's true. And the thing we we got to talk to Dwight Stahl, who is the um, you know I guess line manager mm-hmm. um, for Marvel Legends, and and they actually do a good job of owning that because mm-hmm. they are proud of and they should be proud of the ground that they have made um since then and if that was a part of the whole evolution of marvel legends to bring us to where we are right now yeah. then it's a part of history that i'm willing to accept because <laughs> everything that was uh, on display and showed uh yesterday was yeah. pretty damned impressive <laughs> yeah I, I i put on the boards i said i think you could sum it up by saying they revealed a Thundra figure uh, and not only that but she looks beautiful and nobody's even talking about it because it's that's not even close to the Mi- Misty news. Knight's uh, <laughs> taking all of her news right now <laughs> yeah but um, I mean honestly they you know the things that people are most most collectors are always concerned with with legends or you know other lines for that matter is um, how how much stuff are we getting are you gonna dive into the you know B and C list characters um, what are the sculpts like? You know, are we going to have, are you going to use the same old stuff or inappropriate molds? You know, or, or are we getting to, every single one of those boxes got ticked by Hasbro this weekend in a big way. Um, you know, not only, we, we, uh, we knew we were getting this uh, Thanos wave, the second wave of Avengers Legends, and there'd been some leaks about, um, a possible Ant-Man wave, and we thought that there was going to be another Avengers wave, but all this stuff was confirmed. So at this point, we've got basically, if you count, I mean, th- these lines are sort of interchangeable at this point. Technically, one is a Spider-Man Legends mm-hmm. wave, one is an Ant-Man Legends But you're talking from this point forward, and not to mention the fact that there is a wave hitting right now, which um, we're not even Avengers and Spider Man. So right. it's really actually two. Right. So <laughs> let's not even count those, which probably would have hit in maybe in December if the docks yeah. problem wasn't an issue. But um, but going forward this year, we already have confirmed four waves um, of Marvel Legends, which would 
be enough, you know, it would be a respectable showing for an entire year, and there's probably more stuff. Yeah, you to know, either either they didn't say it overtly, or we just were too caught up in the frenzy of it to to really take note of exact release dates on mm -hmm. this. But the way that it sounded that most of this stuff was going to come out, it was I was thinking that this stuff is going to be ending by end of summer, mm -hmm. so not even heading into the holiday season. Mm -hmm. We may not have even seen what they have planned for that, and I know that there were leaks and whatnot. Um, or proposed supposed leaks ahead of time, but I've got to tell you that um, that did not take the sheen off of anything that no. that that they that they showed, and they actually built on it and made it yeah. even more impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and you know, I, 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 they were they they were a little bit more vague about release dates than they typically are, and I think some of that is because of the doc problems if you and Chinese New Year starts. and Chinese New Year's and if you haven't heard the all the west western US ports are sort of um, stopped up right now with with labor disputes and stuff so that's kept things from coming in so I think they were trying to play a little close to the vest um, with some of the that but if but if we're assuming that you know this first well not the first but the Spider-Man Legends wave and the Avengers wave that are currently hitting were meant to sort of ship more or less at the same time. And maybe it's probably a safe bet that the next Avengers wave and Spider-Man wave w were meant to hit sort of at the same time, which would be first quarter yeah. of this year. And then uh, I would assume that the Ant-Man wave wouldn't come out later than the second quarter since the movie. Right. Uh, you want they that stuff. They always get stuff out before. Right. You want it yeah, on shelves movie. by the time the movie, and the movie is May. So, and then um, the same thing with the Hulkbuster wave, which is very heavy with Age, uh, um, Age of Ultron figures, including the Hulkbuster bath, and that movie is June. So I, I think it's most of this stuff is meant to be first half of well, this year. Well, and, and all of the stuff that they had on display did not look like it was, you know, fragile, hand-painted, and a Hulkbuster. They, it was a pre-production sample, so it wasn't final, but they were walking around with it, and <laughs> we actually, you know, got to touch it and, yeah. you, know, you know, move the joints and whatnot. So everything up through that last uh, or the third i mm -hmm. guess avengers wave is in some form of production so yeah. and you know the, i mean some of the valkyrie figure the um age of ultron cap and hulk they'd shown those all the way back as early as october mm -hmm. so you know this stuff so all i'm saying is you know if this was all they were doing for the year, oh, and not to mention three retail exclusive yeah. um, box which are, sets, which are all over the map in kind of a great way. <laughs> yeah, covering sort of covering all the bases. But mm -hmm. um, if that was all they were doing for the whole year, it would be a great year. And yet, there's probably, fingers crossed, more stuff coming. We did ask him about um, the Guardians of the Galaxy comic box set, which was sort of rumored or I guess they they mentioned announced. yeah it, it was yeah, announced yeah. at San Diego yeah um, and then we hadn't heard anything about it they sort of hemmed and hawed they you know couldn't give us anything specific it didn't they didn't say it was canceled I think it's just a matter of maybe they're finding what retail channel it's going through yeah and and I think another thing is is that I if I if I remember correctly the show the cartoon for Guardians of the Galaxy is actually getting kicked off a little bit earlier than mm -hmm. originally planned. That's going to be late fall, I think they alluded mm -hmm. to. So maybe the time will be, you know, more right, right for that box set during during that period. Right. Um, and I don't know what else. Was there anything else? Oh, well, there was, you know, a few figures uh, either from this, uh, the so-called Lost Legends, or, you know, yeah. the stuff that had been announced, like, over a year ago that from the waves that got canceled, which they've been trying to put back in and almost have reassigned all those figures, as well as a couple of things like uh, Magic and Dormammu, which they had shown design and, and, and uh, 3D, you know, um, printing of those figures, but we haven't heard anything else. So we asked about those. Um, pretty much, for the Lost Legends, pretty much the only stuff that's left, I mean, we're getting in these the stuff that we saw this weekend, we are getting Tiger Shark, Blizzard, uh, Bulldozer. Um, well, of course, Batrox coming. Batrox in coming wave two, in yeah. Wave Two. Um, so you know they and uh, we've already got Radioactive Man. So they've really hit most of those. The ones that are left are female figures like Rogue, Danny Moonstar, um, a couple of others. The 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 Jean Grey. There was two variants of the Jean Grey Phoenix. Mm -hmm. 
I they didn't say as much, but I kind of and people will take this two different ways, but I kind of feel like they're probably those probably are not going to come out. Even what I don't know if they got as far, I guess they got as far as being tooled. Yeah, some of Rogue was definitely tooled. Yeah. But, you know, most of the Rogue parts were already tooled anyway. Right. So, yeah, you kind of get but to the point where it's The bottom line they're is out of, they're out of date by now. Exactly. I mean, they cuz they've improved the female sculpts to the point where if you were going to put out if you were going to do those characters, do that you would do them on the new sculpt, yeah. you know why? And you could probably I mean even the unique sculpting for most of those characters like say Rogue's head. Mm-hmm. You could put that you could right. you still use that head right. and then put it on something else. And they did say thank God you're here, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Dwight did say there is a new female body that we still haven't seen yet that's coming I out, right? I believe so. Then like he said, I think you called it like the average right. woman or that we, you know, we have the right. younger lady, we have the, 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 super, the powerhouse lady, yeah. and now there's going to be a yeah. new like yeah. re- regular yeah, woman. Yeah, he did mention bucks. that. So, because um, we, we were talking about that in context with the male mm-hmm. bucks and the Grim Reaper has a new um, sort of mid-size muscular hero um, body. And he said, you know, something... He, that you know, having the, that range of like three to four men was great, and now they wanted to complete that with the women too. So, yeah. so it's it, n- not only is the is the product that they're turning out more impressive, but you can tell talking to him, especially about base body types and whatnot, it's a lot more thoughtful now too than I yeah. think it's ever been. And they're seeing the the long range possibilities mm-hmm. of these bodies that have taken some time mm-hmm. to be developed but are finally really, really, really nice. And mm-hmm. it it just adds to that the modular capabilities of production. But also, I mean, I know not everybody's with me uh, with this, but it brings that cohesion to the line that is so yeah. gotten so important. Yeah. To it, me. It, it's great. You know, if you if you say we've got and there's probably more than this if you look at some of the large characters or build a figures but basically four male body types mm-hmm. now with the the Spider-Man that's just come out the, the Pizza Spider-Man Pizza Spider-Man um, Bucky Cap everyone Black calls Panther, it that Black Daredevil, Panther Daredevil right? yeah. um, the Grim Reaper the new Grim Reaper, Reaper Craven uh, body uh, is Craven also Craven is also ah body, excellent yeah. and then um, the Hyper onion. Hyper onion. <laughs> Hyperion auto corrected uh, <laughs> right. on, on a phone becomes hyper onion. <laughs> um, that's you know it's that's enough body types to where you it you know the people that feel like oh everything's on the same you know body because there's a lot of people that feel like you know when it's sort of cookie cutter all the same that, you know that, that's a little boring that's that's four different body types to give it enough diversity but it they all. Have share the same aesthetic. They yeah. they all really integrate. They go together. Um, and and when with those tools already established, it actually gives you the opportunity on figures that they can use as the base for that to have sculpted details as mm-hmm. add-ons that may otherwise have to be painted. Or you know more of a line's budget can mm-hmm. go to the characters that absolutely cannot right. use that have to be bases. a one-off. So sculpt. you yeah. know um, you you get to take advantage of that at another level which I think is very cool because yeah. you know um, Spider-Man and Reed Richards or Daredevil mm-hmm. and Johnny Storm being of the same mm-hmm. you know base each one of those to me that's just how they're built and they should be that way so right, right. I, I really enjoy it <laughs> yeah so it's it's great they've been able to do that um, and, so we've talked about the volume of stuff and the sort of quality of it but mm-hmm. the the depth of characters also is um yeah <laughs> it, 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 it's impressive and i'll tell you one probably the thing that i'm most impressed about is is that 90 percent of the time i'm a classic or iconic or well-known and trusted look mm-hmm. um that that's my preference for just about any given character there are exceptions here and there but some of the characters that they did show are either more modern or their looks aren't as long lasting or they're specific or something like that but damn it they're done so well that Mm -hmm. i'm past that so Mm -hmm. it's yes i want to add add that modern vision you know to my shelf you know i that the the new doctor strange we've been hurting for one for for so long and while i'm sure some people will be disappointed that he's not completely classic he looks fantastic and don't forget there's a doctor strange movie coming um you know before too long so that opens up opportunity of in and of itself but even these 
figures that a couple of years ago I may have passed on because they weren't as good mm -hmm. and they're not of the costume that I like. Mm -hmm. Those days are past and I'm buying full waves yeah. of everything. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, Misty Night, Thundra. Misty it, Night, man. I'll, I'll tell you, I, I don't want to take up an entire podcast talking about, <laughs> you know, Misty Night, but uh, as impressive as so many of the other figures were, she was the one that uh, that hit me completely off guard. And seeing her um, at whatever stage of production that she was in, mm -hmm. if uh, if they just make the gold paint a little shinier, she's been they nailed her out of production already. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's it's fun to see characters like that, and those are the characters that you know we get afforded by the base bodies and the other character selections. It's like you get Misty Knight, you get Thundra. Um, yeah, um, and 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 I mean it's a really great mix. I mean that's always there's always the tension between the people that want classic iconic costumes, people that want the current modern stuff, people that want movie stuff, people that want movie stuff to never be. Yeah. Created. Um, they have somehow found that magic algebra of just the right of each one because each one of these waves has it touches on you know whether you've got a classic Bronze Age Thundra in the same wave as a movie war machine and a current comic vision. vision yeah. You know, like, it's everything together. And, um, and and a Hulkbuster that really, really could be cheated either way, movie sure. or, I mean, or comic. Right, you know? yeah, that design is, it crosses across pretty well. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the exclusives, the, the Toys R Us exclusive three-pack shield directors, mm -hmm. the Target exclusive, which is the, uh, is that the movie one or the comic one? It's the white. It's the one that's with the, white. Yeah. Vision. So that's the and, three comic figures. Yeah. Ultron, and Vision, and Hulk. Hulk. Yeah. Um, and then Doc Hulk. <laughs> yeah. And then the um, the Amazon, which is a uh, four pack of movie figures, which is all the 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 movie people that movie characters that people have been demanding that they hadn't made yet, which is Thor. Hawkeye and Black Widow, along with Bruce Banner, which you, you've got your Mark, uh, Ru yeah, yeah, Mark Ruffalo figure. Now. I mean, <laughs> um, and what a great, you know, like uh, has Marvel Legends ever made a civilian before? No, not let's not count Professor Xavier. I don't think there's ever been a civilian figure. Civilian, and oh, you know, man. I mean, I guess Bruce if we're Banner. Wrong, is, we'll, we'll get we'll get right called out on it. Um, but I don't think so. And yeah, he's you know he's Bruce Banner, but he's they, I mean, there's there was a five inch banner that came with the Hulk or something, yeah, but, but that was, they've never, uh, you know, they've done Shield agents or, but they, but I mean, but they're not that, you know, those aren't civilians, you yeah, know. I yeah. mean, the, the the suited villains, I mm -hmm. think, is about as close as they've gotten, um, right? You know, so um, so yeah, I mean that, you know, to do a Bruce Banner, even though it's a you know a movie Bruce Banner, I think that's great. It opens the door to some interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, and. It's it's one of those things that I think you can find um, possibilities uh, with with all of those sets, mm -hmm. even if they're not completely uh, right. your bag. Because right. I mean, Vision brings you bare feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and uh, I mean, yeah. Um, the great thing too about that Bruce Banner figure, he doesn't have a, the, he's got a different shirt and no tie. Mm -hmm. um, the the new so the Marvel Legends. The new suit body comes from the Phil Coulson figure, which is in the one um, exclusive set, which is supposed to come, I think, hit about just about any time now. Yeah. They're using that for the chameleon figure in the Spider-Man Rhino wave, who comes with alternate heads of J. Jonah Jameson and <laughs> Hammerhead. So talk about getting your mileage out yeah. of one suit. Um, Bruce Banner figure uses that same body, but does not have, appropriately, the buttoned up shirt and tie which is kind of yeah. cool so it's like it would you make said him those... angry to wear a tie <laughs> <laughs> but it's great because like you said they you know they the the tooling that you do reuse allows you to to make those subtle changes that yeah. go a long way in yeah. terms of um and uh dr strange it seems to be has a his chest front chest piece and possibly ab pieces seem to be uh, smoothed out not as muscular yeah seem yeah. to be tooled just for him so little things like that um and you know, and, you know tooled just for him now but well yeah but down who, the line who, there, down there the are line, plenty of characters sure, that, sure. that would be able to take advantage of that so um so you know the 
not only are the figures impressive and you know must have, but so so are all the the build build a figures. You know mm -hmm. that, like I said, the I, I'm not the biggest movie figure guy in the world. Although Phil Coulson will be joining my <laughs> uh, my shelves with with no question. But um, that that Hulkbuster Iron Man, he, mm -hmm. he can he can sway you know movie or mm -hmm. or comic. That that new Rhino, I've got to tell you, I'm torn on that. I'm so devoted to that. Sinister Six mm -hmm. um, pack Rhino mm -hmm. uh, from Toy Biz, but man, I'm going to be collecting that whole wave anyway. So yeah, um, I, I'd of course use the alternate head because it's right. more classic. But right. uh, that that's gotta that's gotta have you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, so so uh, what 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 if you had to pick one, who would <laughs> be of all the stuff that we saw uh, of all the Marvel Legends, who would be who would be your number one? I, oh, I, that, that's a horrible question to ask because it there is. was just so much. Well, I'll tell you, there's a number of candidates. I mean, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, Misty Knight I'm, would be the most excited about just because yeah. it's so surprising, so cool, and they did such a great job with it. Um, so she would be in the running. Grim Reaper, one of the first yeah. customs that I made when I first got back into customs was a Grim Reaper. Yeah. Um, so that's been a long time. And the fact that they did him in that classic outfit, um, he, you know, he just seems perfect and he's on the new body and everything. So he would be up there. Um, um, you know, Vision is someone... Uh, that as soon as we got that new Bucky cat body, that was why I was like, oh, there's a, here's a checklist of all the great yeah. figures that could be redone on that body. Daredevil, yeah. Vision, you know, they're going through that list. So he would be up there, even if he's not exactly his classic design. Valkyrie looks great. Um, I, 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 although I think she'll probably be lost a little bit, not only to, you know, the line as a whole, but the other female figures. But I think that Wasp, Oh Turned gosh! Out great. That and, is a uh, figure that I didn't think I needed. I didn't yeah. think I needed a new wasp, and yet that a, that wasp looks great. She I, looks great. I, I think it's cool that we're getting a giant man, a six-inch giant man. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> well, it, I know a lot a, of people are sort of like, it's huh? A, it's an interesting what? choice, but you know, um, it's it's cool, and the fact that they're, but but that's you know, I think I think the Ant Man movie is going to be a little quirky, mm -hmm. um, and the product seems to be following that as yeah. well because a six inch giant man and then the the actual um little little ant man mm -hmm. actually on the ant you know mm -hmm. that's going to i think it's going to hang on the shelf the same way but mm -hmm. you really have to turn it 90 degrees to have it displayed uh correctly so right. it, 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 it's kind of cool <laughs> yeah and, and then craven craven was another big oh one god for me. yeah how and impressive i forgot <laughs> because we didn't uh they didn't actually have him in the showroom although yeah they did show the promo picture um, an yeah, another one I didn't think I needed an update. Yeah, um, and, but and you know I gotta say, Ghost Rider. Yeah, Ghost Rider is cool too. I mean you're pro you're going to need, um, you're probably going to need your old Ghost Rider bike mm -hmm. uh, to go with him, but you probably should still have that. So um, <laughs> he'll he'll yeah. he'll be a great addition too. You yeah. know. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I was just I was looking at the um, the f the special four inch Ant Man that comes with the articulated ant. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of a a one off. But, yeah. But great. Um, and, and and you know that and that's the thing about the Ant Man uh, Legends. Of course, you have Ultron as mm -hmm. the the build a figure to support mm -hmm. it, which I get. But the fact that Hasbro and Marvel mm -hmm. um, are behind marketing that movie mm -hmm. so much because it, it's probably got the most spotty history at least from a production standpoint as right. any marvel uh cinema right. universe um movie to date but it looks like they're they're all on board and it'll be interesting to see the movie and <laughs> we're getting toys <laughs> <laughs> yeah um Gosh, I almost forgot that we're finally getting the bulldozer as well. The yeah, shout our wrecking group. That you know, if you guys, I'm excited about that, but that's like, uh, it's like a sigh of relief. Yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if you guys, you know, want to go over the full listings and see all the pictures and stuff, obviously hit up the Foosh front page and, yeah. the, and the boards, the Marvel forum, um, because everything is is up there. It's too much to go through, you know. We'll leave it. We'll leave it for your own. Yeah, and and, and I know you did a good job of putting it out there on the forums. But a, a little tidbit, 
um, when we, we were talking to them when it came to base bodies was that um, we did get confirmation that Iron Fist is the last figure. Uh, unle un now, there was a caveat. Unless something unforeseen happens, mm -hmm. Iron Fist will be the last figure on that kind of old mid-size I mean, I guess it's, it was had. sort of the, the Hasbro version of the bullseye body yeah. with the with the hinged shoulder, hinged chest. Yeah. Um, an engineering feature I always kind of liked, but yeah. that but that uh, sculpt was sort of lacking. Um, and they they also felt that that sculpt was sort of lacking, and they have <laughs> retired it. Uh, yeah, it, it's become obsolete at this yeah, point. Yeah, there's not at this point. There's not even anything already in the pipeline using it, and they've got no plans to use it again. So, it get, so even yeah. if it did get reused, you're not going to see it for at least another year and a <laughs> yeah, half or yeah. so, so. So yeah, that one is done. Um, yeah. Exciting. I don't know what else we could possibly see this year, but I guess as long as the um, as long as the movies are successful and they've um, got to show something at, at, at Comic Con, so yeah, you yeah, know. and we don't know. You know, I'm sure there'll be a Comic Con exclusive. We oh, don't yeah. know what that is yet, so we pro we'll probably hear that in about uh, six or eight weeks. You know, if not before. Um, yeah. And um, but it was it was a good time for Marvel. At Hasbro, not only because of what they were doing, but of course, you know, no real Star Wars product could be shown because, you know, the, the focus is going to shift to mm -hmm. Episode Seven quickly. But they mm -hmm. can't talk about they they could not even really talk about the name of the movie for right. fear <laughs> of things. So so I get it, but it was really cool and a little nostalgic to have Marvel Legends be the centerpiece of yeah. of Toy Fair yeah. again. Yeah. You know, there was, it, it just hasn't happened simply because they haven't shown as much. Right, they, haven't, they haven't had as much. There was no no G.I. Joe products currently yeah. um, talked about. So, so Hasbro was really the Marvel show, which was kind of cool. It was cool. It was very cool. That, they, they presented first... Mm -hmm. in the presentation and right? it was and, the longest presentation. yeah and it made me nervous i was like oh man are these guys going first because we're only going to get to see two or three <laughs> slides but they they definitely uh, were the longest presentation and it, yeah. it was it was really exciting and and like i said from a nostalgic standpoint but also because we we have entered the age in my opinion of the best marvel legends overall ever yeah yeah, I think you did. And, and I, I love Toy Biz. And I love Toy <laughs> yeah, Biz. Yeah. And this stuff certainly stands on the shoulders of all that, but they've just sure. you know, perfected a lot of aspects of it. I guess we should just, uh, as a note, there was four, new four inch, a couple of new four inch yep. things shown, although it certainly didn't get the focus mm -hmm. that it had gotten in the past. Um, there's no word that it's been canceled or is in danger of being canceled they you know the, the the official word is this is still a line doing well that they want to continue to support and they did show two new figures yeah so um, I, I I think they're kind of at a, a point where they're not sure how to balance two scales it, yeah. it's hard to do two scales for any property not mm -hmm. named Star Wars right um, I guess but with all of the product that they have coming mm -hmm. for Legends um, this it, year, it's where do you fit it in? And it's also got to be a question of um, human resources. Yeah. I mean, you know, Hasbro is the number two or three, depending on how you count, yeah, toy company Lego. in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean, you know, one, two, and three, there's big <laughs> big differences yeah. between, you know, I'm not saying Hasbro is not a large company, but there are limits. They have a lot of licenses and, you know that Marvel team is stretched, so to do a whole nother. Well, Dwight Dwight talked about it best. It's like you there there are whole teams of talented people, but you know the the the, the people who drive Marvel Legends from internally at Hasbro from an oversight point of view, Dwight does the managing, and he has an engineer and a painter that you know yeah. these guys. It's really three guys internally now. Yeah. Gentle Giant works on a lot of stuff, sure, obviously, sure. but. You know, it's not like there's 300 people managing right. this line. Right. Yeah. And, and 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 as soon as someone is working on the four inch line, that's someone not working right. on the six inch line. So yeah, it's a matter of balancing. And and in terms of overall product, you know, even Dwight was even sort of concerned with the amount of stuff that they're doing this year, um, saying, you know, we we're really um, we're happy for the success and we're able to do all this stuff, but we also are always mindful that you know you guys being us the collectors you know mm -hmm. only have so much money yeah. to spend and you know they don't want to uh, you know there's only so it yeah it's, it's nice to have you don't that want to glut the market right yeah. it's nice to have that concern but one thing that he did mention was that 
they're doing so much because retailers are coming to them and mm -hmm. telling them that they want it and they want it at the legend scale. Mm -hmm. they're, they're back to demanding yeah. Marvel Legends after I think kind of going through that, oh, smaller is mm -hmm. more efficient um, mm -hmm. kind of category, but yeah, it's Legends again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, all right, so we've spent half our time talking about Marvel, mm -hmm. but it's I think it's only fair given the, the great showing. Um, again, check out the, the site and the boards if you want details on lineups and uh, pictures and all that good stuff. Um, we can probably talk a little more quickly about DC stuff. Now, obviously, we'll, we're going to get to Mattel in a second. Obviously, the, the DC Classic line is over. Um, what they are left doing in terms of DC stuff is the Total Heroes, which is a retail line, the Batman 66, um, which is, I guess, still a retail line, although there has been some online stuff of that, and yeah. and the uh, the multiverse line, which is the the small like three and three quarter, mostly Batman themed stuff. I'll be and, and a couple media, of media and media themed, yeah. you know, be it movies um, or video games. And I have to say, after all, after the you know the Mattel collector um, event today, um, it kind of seems like. All of those might be wrapping up. There was no. I, I don't want to. I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth. They did not announce the cancellation of yeah. anything. But it sure did seem that like there was very little, if any, new stuff shown for the multiverse line, which I kind of don't think is doing it very well to begin with. There was nothing new to announce for Total Heroes, um, which is unusual if you think that nothing new has been announced for that for a while, yeah. and it, that's a retail, a mass retail line. The Batman 66, they did show, again, the two gift packs, the, the three-pack of Batman, Robin, and Batgirl, which would be you know, the only way to get your Batgirl, mm -hmm. as well as the, um, the Batcave sort yeah. of accessory set, which they had shown at San Diego last year. Had they shown the Adam West head? Yet, or was I, that new I, to this show? I don't remember if I, I know they mentioned it, but I Did can't they? remember okay. if they showed it. I don't remember it. ever seeing it before. Right. So, so a swappable Adam West head yeah. was included in that. But um, um, so I did ask the rep, the reps, if you know, since they were showing it again, you know, does that mean they, they they're a little more firm on a release date? Because at the time when they originally showed it, they didn't have a release date or even a, a specific retail channel that it was coming right. through. Um, and he said that they didn't sell. So um, that's, I assume, you know, that stuff seems far enough along that uh, I assume they're going to try and find someone to, mm -hmm. to, to buy it because it seems like it's, it's they made. Yeah. They put, yeah, their, their, their skin's in the game. So I'm not too worried about it not coming out, but I don't think there is anything more coming from that line. Um, I, it, I guess, I guess, I guess it's, you only really know and it's telling when they show something at Toy Fair or they show something at San Diego and then it doesn't show up at the next show. That, yeah. that That's really kind of the, yeah. the best unofficial confirmation that yeah. you can get without someone deliberately yeah. saying this is done. So so the bottom line is what is Mattel doing with DC now now that um, Classics is officially you know over? It's hard to say. I yeah. think that they... I, they have that license. Um, I think that they are sort of reassembling and taking stock and starting, you know, kind of from scratch, thinking, what do we, what DC toys do we want to make? What do we use this for? Um, so maybe by the time we get to um, San Diego Comic Con this year, we'll have some more. Well, clues you know. About that. Um the DC movie slate, I guess, is getting ready to pick up as well. Yeah, so there you would may be think that there'll be some action there. figure or some kind of toy support for for that. Um, so, that but but at this point, what the next one is still over a year away. Oh, a little over a year away. It, but it, is uh, Batman Superman the next movie? Batman Batman versus Superman: right. The Quest for no Justice Dawn of Justice, Justice, Dawn, Justice Dawn of Justice Dawn, whatever yeah. <laughs> Justice it, it begins. I don't know. Um, <laughs> That's the next one. It comes out next year. Yeah. Um, so you would think they got to already be des designing the toys because toy, you know, making a toy yeah. is like a two-year, you know, thing. So they've, that's if there is going to be toys for that, they've got to be in the works, yeah. um, at, at least on the drawing board. So. And, and you know, um, let's let's be honest here. Movies 
generally sell toys. So mm -hmm. if if they're taking time to take stock for the action figures that are based off of something that don't have media mm -hmm. support necessarily, uh, you know, just because something isn't being released doesn't mean something's not being worked on. So right. having the time to get maybe mm -hmm. some movie stuff going, then they would be right. able to have a better idea as to what right. they're going to do beyond that. And, you know, like a, a lot of what Hasbro's been able to do with the Marvel stuff is because of the success of the Marvel movies. Right. And they've, they like you said before, they found a good formula. Um, the, the mixture of comic and movies mm -hmm. seems to be really working for them. And, yeah. I mean, that speaks to the strength of the movies. Yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe that's something that DC might notice. Yeah. You know? And, you know, it's funny. People... people notice when they say, you know, Marvel likes to put on everything, Marvel's blah, 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 Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Marvel's, Marvel's Hawkeye, Hawkeye, Marvel's Bulldozer, but I think that is a, is is pretty um, savvy, because when you're, I imagine, you know, a lot of these retailers, it's the movies that are driving, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the, their willingness to buy this product, and they know that Marvel imprimatur, so, you know, even if it's a comic tiger shark, if it's Marvel's tiger shark, it's Marvel. Yeah, you, know, you know, they I, know. I oh, it's the, Marvel. It's Marvel. It's Marvel. I, they I, don't. I think for the longest time, people just put that. Oh, Marvel so and so is because the name's too generic to trademark, or somebody else owns the trademark to just the name. But you're right. It's got yeah. that brand awareness to it now that yeah. Marvel sells mm -hmm. as a brand. Right. So. Right. So whether it's you know movie or not, you know, I, I listen. I, I'm not disparaging any you know retail toy buyers, but how many of them you know know that a tiger shark figure isn't in one of the movies or something, right. you know, if it's Marvel's tiger shark. But w um, what I was going to say is that, um, so Hasbro, you know, they've, they've been able to leverage that Marvel movie success. And I imagine that, you know, Mattel would love to have that on the DC side. They haven't yet. Yeah. So maybe it's sort of a wait and see, uh, you know, maybe that if the next DC movie it is successful and you know launch opens the door to more um, DC cinematic success. Maybe that, well, maybe that changes the game plan for what Mattel can do for, with for, for those intents and purposes. I guess that um, no matter how you feel about DC, how they're handling their movies or whatnot, I think they probably are making a concerted effort to have the next Superman, Batman movie be the the lead in to. Mm -hmm wider things so um, getting that established and getting everything planned out if it means having a dip between mm -hmm. now and then be it in product mm -hmm. or information um, if they're really working on it and they have a plan in place then it might end up being something worth waiting for yeah yeah um, um, yeah it gives me more time to work on some Legion of Superheroes customs <laughs> <laughs> yes yes there are a lot of those oh out there. god only 183 um <laughs> But um, but now DC Collectibles, yeah, that's a whole different story. Yeah, because it's kind of a strange story, but yeah. Now, it just uh, in case you haven't been following, um, since DC Direct became DC Collectibles a couple years back, um, they really they stayed mostly in that sort of seven inch um, action figure scale, but they were real focused on more. And that DC Direct had also been focused in this way, but. DC Collectibles really was focused on current characters, versions of characters, storylines, artist specific, artist specific, like yeah. small, small waves, small sets of very current specific figures. Nothing pre New Fifty Two, you know, nothing it, it, non artist, non artist specific. It, it definitely made sense for the pattern that they were going for, and mm -hmm. and I get it because yeah. pushing current brands is what mm -hmm. brings things home, but. Right. I think from a collector sect, unless you're okay with having, here's a little group, mm -hmm. and here's a different group, completely different artist mm -hmm. style and whatnot, it, things get a little disjointed. Yeah, it's like a lot of mini sets. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's changing, maybe? A little bit. We're it's, getting it's, this, it's called, what is it called? DC Icons. Icons, mm -hmm. which is an interesting way to say DC Classics, yeah. kind of. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and they're still, they're still artist-specific because they're based off of Ivan uh, Rice's, right. which is Rice, Reese, however you... However, his style is not as 
stylized right. as a lot of it, artists. It, it's a smart artist. I will say it's a smart artist to go mm -hmm. with. It's kind of like if you were doing a George Perez artist, specific, right? Right. Know, or, or 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 Garcia. Jose, yeah. yeah. Garcia Lark, um, Lopez. Lopez. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, they're they're first of all they're six inch. They are. Which is they they are six inch compatible. DC, and DC has not made six inch compatible act, action figures since well like this century really like with them, when they first started some of the first figures they made were oh, sort DC, of DC, DC direct, direct yeah were, oh yeah six inch scale not. but they they moved to seven inch sometime around two thousand three and they never looked yeah bad. they really did it before everybody else started doing um, it <laughs> I mean there's always been the you know the the robot or alien or mutant that will fit in with your six sure. step but the that you know they've ne the, so that is that is interesting they're super yeah. articulated which the articulation generally has improved on the DC collectible stuff it, it, it has I have to say that um, because the artist specific style is about as I, I don't I, I'm not saying generic in a mm -hmm. in a negative way I, I mean that actually in a positive mm -hmm. uh, way because it is so generic or you know nondescript or however you want to say it the, the articulation is still kind of the bugger um, for me a little bit and I know I harped on it a little bit but th it'll be interesting how to see how these figures come through production especially mm -hmm. that first series they're taking their time mm -hmm. um, with them because that first series isn't even due to hit until what end of the year at the earliest maybe Nobody early knows, next yeah. year it, it's, it's a long way away so. um, but they are classic designs yep. it's Superman Batman what wait Wonder Woman no no no, no 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 female yet but Superman Batman flash. flash Green Lantern Aquaman Green Arrow are all classic green arrow is sort of like bronze late bronze age classic but still pre new 52 it, it, it's classic in the way that it's pre new 52 yeah. let's um, just say that and then that. there's <laughs> uh there's a a more modern or i'm not sure if it's new 52 but the mr Mir is it mr miracle yeah yeah who is um the modern and, yeah. and a couple of others he's but, kind of the goat of the right but um but the fact that those other and I guess their 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 rationale is this whole convergence storyline where everything is yeah. you know d everything is back and it's a multiverse again. I'm glad you didn't bring up Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle because I sure as hell am not going to bring up Jaime Reyes. Blue oh, Beetle. was that included in there? <laughs> yeah, he, he was one of them too. Which he looks he looks like a cool figure. Hey, he's pretty new fifty two. Yeah. Did he cross over to the new fifty two? I never I, saw. I think him. he did. I, I don't know. I don't um, remember. But in, in any case. Um, it's an interesting it's an interesting move because of being six inch because of including so many classic designs and it'll be interesting to see if they are thinking that this is an entree into filling that void where DC Classics and Mattel have 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 left the scene or if they're yeah. thinking of this as again just another you know mini set of figures. yeah that, that that that's what I I'm in a position that I have an extensive DC comic action figure collection most of it came from one line a lot uh, other stuff comes from other lines and some of it's customized um, but I'm not uh, looking to get rid of that and completely reset right. and for those of you who may be considering doing that I would give it a mm -hmm. little bit of time because um, the Batman the animated series stuff is bold as far as how far out they have it planned. That's great. That's fantastic. But DC Direct, DC Collectibles doesn't have the history mm -hmm. of doing that yet. So I would wait to see just how serious they are about the mm -hmm. icons line, see how it sells. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm going to do it to upgrade where I can mm -hmm. or add characters sure. that I don't have mm -hmm. yet. Um, because I mean, to me, Harley Quinn is an instant upgrade. She was the one that I was the most oh, blown right. away. Yeah. So it's she a looks nice Fantastic. classic Harley Quinn. Yeah. She looks fantastic, but I'm not necessarily convinced on Batman or Aqu certainly not Aquaman um, mm -hmm. or or even Superman yet. So it, it, it will be interesting to see yeah. that. Like I, I know you've brought it up a couple of times that the heaviness towards um, a list characters in the first three series yeah, the is a little troubling for me. I know Wonder Woman's not included, but right, let's but that's be a, serious yeah. here. The, the fact <laughs> that the first you know uh, reveal has pretty much the entire Justice League in it yeah. already makes me think that if they continue the line, it's going to be some new 52 versions of them or something. I mean, it doesn't seem like they're going to move 
straight into you know Doom Patrol and yeah. uh, Challengers of the Unknown or yeah. something. Which I would love. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that's how they would get me for sure. Right. right. Um, is to do that, but you know. Um, the, the the press pictures that they released before the show did not do those figures any justice, in my opinion. They yeah. were photographed strangely. The legs looked weird. The arms looked lanky. Um, but in person, they do look a lot better. Yeah. Superman, Aquaman head sculpts, I'm still not completely... Mm-hmm. Sold on because they're, those aren't, I guess, iconic enough right. for me. The green, le- the green arrow, green looks arrow, great, looks good. And I, I will go. I will say, no matter what happens with this line, I will buy Harley Quinn, mm-hmm. no matter what. She's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. She is really great. So we shall see. Yeah. We shall see. And, and 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 that's and that's what I think everybody needs to remember. Wait and see. I right. get it's mm-hmm. new. I yeah. get it's exciting. I get the potential mm-hmm. and the excitement behind it. Mm-hmm. But don't do a fire sale yet or don't hang all your hopes and dreams Mm -hmm. give it a little time see what they show at san diego Mm -hmm. um and after the first couple of waves sell through to see if okay they're serious it's Mm -hmm. selling well enough and you're going to be able to build out a universe this way i just you have to be cautious let's see yeah (laughs) yeah not saying don't buy them but right but don't 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 get rid of your other (laughs) collection yet um uh, going back to Mattel, mm-hmm. um, so Masters of the Universe, we know that 2015 was sort of the the end of the so-called roadmap in terms of the what, updated roadmap. The updated yeah. roadmap of mm-hmm. what um, uh, they originally had planned. You know the 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 characters they had originally planned on getting through with the with the Masters of the Universe Classics line, um, but. The line isn't stopping. It's going to keep going. So yeah. now it's sort of, they sort of get to move past the roadmap and say, well, what else? What else can we do now? What did they show today that was that was new uh, today? You know, there there were rumors going around that they were going to show a lot more than they did. But mm-hmm. what they showed at the show showed at the show <laughs> today was really pretty much on par with what they've been showing at Toy Fair the past couple of years Mm -hmm. um, at least. So, um, you know, we'd seen everything through June, which included, you know, Huntara who comes in March, Angela in April, Blast Attack in May, and then Multibot and Squeeze in June. Multibot maybe May, I I don't remember. But the new ones that they showed were uh, Peekaboo Mm -hmm. for July and Mara from New Adventures, who was the fan vote winner. Uh, for August. So as far as the main line goes, um, that's what they showed, which two females in a row, I think that's unprecedented, um, except uh, up to this year, because Huntara and Angela released two females in a row, and now Peekaboo and Mara released two females in a row. So uh, 2015's off to a strange and great start uh, as far as that goes. But then uh, the other big news is they announced that Club 2000X, which is the add-on mini-sub um, for which they showed uh, Calyx, Evil Seed. Um, they announced Ceratus, and they showed promotional photos of him. He was not actually in the room. Um, and then they also had uh, the 2000X head pack, uh, which I believe is going to be the incentive uh, okay. uh, item. It's, I guess you can't call it a figure, um, right. but it'll be the incentive item for for the club. So um, it's it was it was it was a pretty strong showing. Um, I don't want anybody to be disappointed about what they showed based off of rumor and or hearsay before mm-hmm. the show about how they were going to show a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that makes anything that was rumored off the table or mm-hmm. unlikely. Mm-hmm. It's just it wasn't time to show it yet. Right. So. Um, it's strong, and 2015 is that year of promise, uh, like you mm-hmm. said, to finish off the vintage line. But here's the thing: um, 2016, as long as it sells uh, during the sub period in the summer, it's coming, and I am really, really looking forward to it because we're kind of going to be at this liberation period of yeah, it's great. The vintage line, the vintage characters are fantastic. I'm so excited to finish that off. But 
now the possibilities kind of expand mm -hmm. um, and it goes into pulling from all different places getting characters that you've never had before with mm -hmm. more frequency so I'm I'm really excited about Masters I think it's going to continue to be strong there's the movie rumor uh, that's coming that's coming along um, you know you never know what what's in the hopper as to you know what may be happening within the line or outside the line with other things that may also strengthen um, the line so I think that we are in good shape from a master's um, point of view and cool. and I, I was excited for what they showed you cool know? Um, cool and I'm excited to see what they haven't shown yet I mean I think we can piece together the rest of 2015 we've got what right four months left and I, you can pretty much call it um, what yeah. it's going yeah, to be. Yeah, because you, know, so. you know that they're finishing out the vintage characters and you know which vintage characters are left. Yeah, so and the they, did, they didn't show any of the deluxe or the, the quarterly mm -hmm. items um, so that's kind of in the most you know uh, flux as far as where it's going to fall but if, if you see that we have Mara in August that leaves September, October, November and December and from the vintage lines we have uh, what Sarad? We have uh, Dragstore. We have uh, Perfuma from the Princess of Power line, and there's one more. I think that's the wild card mm -hmm. figure because I think that's going to be the one figure in the standard line for the rest of the year that isn't a pure vintage character. Right. Um, so. The, the, the variants will fall in two packs. The, the, the energy zoids, the guys that spin around, those right. will have to be executed in a holiday item or a San Diego item or something right. like that. But, I mean, you know the last three figures from the vintage lines, unique characters that haven't been shown yet, and they're going to show up at Comic-Con, mm -hmm. if not before. Right. And that's it. <laughs> then we get to be excited again. It's, yeah. I, I think 2016 is going to be like, you know, a yeah. throwback to when you were a kid. When you don't know what's coming. I want a um, Frank Langella Skeletor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the movie. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, the Karg, Karg from the movie, the one of the probably main characters that is a new character that they can't do. Mm. I was jonesing for him for a long time, but um, Matt O'Toole at the Castle of Power uh, took care of that with one uh, quick Karg kit that is absolutely fantastic. Mm. So, um, But still, tons of potential out there. Um. So, uh, let's segue from Masters, which is designed by the Four Horsemen Studios, yeah. and talk about Four Horsemen Studios themselves. Um, they, they had a booth for the first time ever at Toy Fair. Was that the first time they had a That was the first time that they've ever had their own booth at Toy Fair. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was cool um, seeing them set up. They, uh, as many people know, they had a successful Kickstarter for their Ravens. The Gothetropolis uh, Goth line. line. Goth line, which it was the... Um, the the various birds um, and those are shipping currently um, if almost not, done almost shipping. done shipping yeah. um, so following on the success of that they announced this week their uh, a new Kickstarter for their Mythic Legions yeah um, which is a fantasy based uh, figure line six inch scale army builder line. army builders <laughs> there there are um, it's there are some uh, particular characters, but it's um, it has a lot it, of modular capabilities. Exactly, exactly. Um, so we're talking knights, skeletons, trolls, dwarfs, orcs, this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, very cool stuff. It, go, it plays right to their strengths as sculptors and designers in terms of the intricate, um, you know, things, the weapons, the chain mail, the armor, the, the nasty bad the, guys, the nasty yeah. bad guys. Um, so that's all laid out on their Kickstarter. There are, like I said, there, there are like the basic sort of army builder guys. Then there are um, the sort of specific characters um, and then stretch goals that include, you know, characters that, you know, have more tooling and stuff. And, and like you said, modular parts and um, stuff between all of the above. Um, but we got to see, you know, they had shown some of this stuff uh, before at their own uh, toy show um, during New York Comic Con last year. Um, we got to see more of it this year um, today. Yeah. Uh, it's so beautiful. Well, you know, the, so I, I love the Gothetropolis stuff, and, and the birds turned out beautifully. But this is the line that 
speaks to me more than than that mm-hmm. for for sure. And uh, knights, orcs, skeletons above all. Um, that that's been something that I've been dying for for a long time. And I was kind of waiting with bated breath because. I'm not a three and three quarter or four inch. Right, scale they had collector. originally um, envisioned, envisioned yeah. this as being a, a three and three quarter inch line because they, because of uh, the nature of being an army building type uh, uh, line, and they also wanted you know to be able to do giant characters and you know things of that nature, horses yeah. and things like that. But um, for a multitude of reasons. They came to the conclusion that six inch really made more sense, and that doesn't take off the table the other things that they wanted to do with right. giant characters and horses and yeah. you know things like that. Um, we, we we got to talk to uh, to both uh, Cornboy and uh, Eric uh, Treadaway pretty extensively um, today about it, and they're obviously very excited about mm-hmm. it. Um, they see the potential of it beyond really anything I think mm-hmm. that they've done in house mm-hmm. um, in the past and. Um, you know, with with the with the Goth Atropolis and the Seventh Kingdom stuff that that came before it, there was always the potential to blow it out and make it expansive or whatnot. But because of how the design cycle works, manufacturing, the fact that they're a very very small independent studio, these things take time. But with Mythic Legions, they're pushing out a huge portion of it mm-hmm. um, right at the beginning, and uh, you know they. Cornboy talked about you know things beyond uh, the initial Kickstarter that mm-hmm. I think um, whether or not they they release that information before or after the Kickstarter um, ends. Uh, he didn't say if they were going to announce anything, but uh, I, I think the thought is is that what's going to have potential to come later will also be just as expansive as mm-hmm. what they're showing now. So. Yeah, I mean it's really a case of the more you know the better it does, the more they can do. Yeah, um, and I know. Um, uh, so much of it has already been done. Uh, one thing that they, um, correct me if I've got this wrong, but with their with the birds that that recently came out, you know, they were sort of taken aback a little by by how successful it was in some mm-hmm. ways. Um, and a lot of the or a few of the stretch goals and things that that got met and exceeded were for um, items that they hadn't finished right. making yet. Yeah. Um, so that created some delays because you know cer- certain orders were held up by um, stretch goal material that they, they had to <laughs> finish making. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a great problem to have. But um, in any case, with, that is not the case with the Mythic, Mythic Legions. Everything that they have got on the Kickstarter at this point, um, including... The, or everything that they will offer. Right. Or right. Um, it ha- is has been created. That is, it's yeah. been designed and sculpted. Maybe not tooled, but it's been right. but it's it's been uh, created. And, and if they add any stretch goals at this point or anything at this going forward that um, that hasn't been, uh, that'll be you know duly noted and and you'll, you'll it'll later. ship separate. So mm-hmm. there won't be um, hopefully the delays you know that that unfortunately they they had to see on the the past one. So. Yeah. Well, you know, um, we we have plans to sit down and uh, talk with the, the horsemen actually in their booth tomorrow. Um, so we'll, we'll get a chance to hopefully really talk intimately about, um, you know, not only their master's work and whatnot, but also with Mythic Legions. So it'll be interesting to hear their um, point of view. So hopefully we will have two podcasts uh, <laughs> right right in a row that yeah. uh, we'll be able to present so um, stay tuned because uh, if we can if we can find the time in, in the schedule to, to talk with them it I, I think it will be good to hear them actually talk about the mythic legions Kickstarter not only for itself but how it's different from the one that they offered mm-hmm. previously yeah great yeah. all right well we're just at time uh, I don't know how we did that so perfectly <laughs> um, thanks guys for um, for listening and uh like i said we'll hopefully be back uh right away with um some more toy fair goodness yeah. uh, meantime check out the boards check our facebook page um the the fush cast um on facebook uh you check uh, the fush twitter feed at the fush yeah. you can check my twitter feed at costume contume i've got some linked pictures there from oh, toy yeah. fair for you guys um, you know where to find us. Our YouTube channel, of course. 
As we have always. Tumblr, too. I think we always forget about Tumblr. Oh, Tumblr. <laughs> Tumblr. I didn't even know we had a Tumblr. <laughs> we have to ask um, Robo. What you know where to find us. And, and, and hit the boards. Hit the front page of our of the site. Um, we're all over the place. Uh, I guess that's it. I think we covered everything yeah. that we meant to. Yeah, it's been a busy two days. It's been, it's been a good uh, two days. Um, it makes you excited for, you know, at least the next two-thirds of the year or so yeah. i guess um and there's still going to be more to come in 2015 <laughs> <laughs> well hopefully we'll get to do another in-person podcast i'm usually yeah. skyping with you it's yeah good to yeah have definitely you, have you here yeah, in the studio i know in, in, uh, the, in, office, person. in, in the new york <laughs> office yes yes cool all right well signing out uh don't forget to play nice bye bye